What's up, everybody? Um, give you a quick little introduction to the project we got going on today. So, uh, welcome to the garage. What we got here is an 85 uh, AW11 MR2. I've had a couple of these in the past. Uh, took a long break from them, but uh, I'm an adult now, so I can buy whatever the hell I want. So, I another one. Uh, this is a hard top crank window, really great example um, of this chassis. I, I've, I've had a lot of fun with these cars in the past. This one's been updated a little bit. You can see the updated tail lights. It's got the newer spoiler and you know some of the trim package and stuff like that. So, uh, but let me give you a little bit of history on this car. The gentleman I bought it from uh, did a bunch of work on the engine, the transmission. It's it's in pretty good shape. Um, drives pretty okay. Unfortunately, at some point in his ownership, uh, right before he sold it, the axle came off the subshaft and punched a hole in the transmission. Never seen it before, never had a problem like this in any of my MR2s, but here we are. So what we're going to try and do, um, because at some point in this car's life, it will probably get a 20 valve. I've had one of those in the MR2 before, it's a great fun motor. Um, or either a rebuilt 4AG with like a late model or Corolla transmission, something like that, something fresh. So the goal here is to fix it for minimal amount of money to get it on the road so it can be driven. Um, because in the end, we're gonna do a bunch of suspension work, we're gonna do, it's a whole project, but I need to get the car driving to bring up any problem areas uh, that we need to address through the whole process. So. Um, we're going to follow the BGB generally. I mean, I know how to work on these cars, so we're going to take some probably some shortcuts. Um, we're going to follow the BGB to take the transmission out of the car, but then we stop. So try this at your own risk. Uh, we're going to split the C52 between the bell housing and the main case. Uh, I will say I don't suggest this. It gets a little bit funky, a little bit tricky, um, but we need to try and get, I think that there's a piece of the transmission inside the case. So we need to try and get that out. I don't want to have to take the fifth gear off. I don't want to have to take the forks apart. Like, we're just going to give it a shot. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, that's okay too, because this transmission already has a hole in it, right? So it's a win-win. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Follow along. Uh, we're going to give this whole thing a go and uh, see, if, uh, see if we can have some fun. All right, first things first, you're gonna want to disconnect and remove the battery. Two reasons behind this. One, we're gonna be messing with the starter. Um, so you want to disconnect the circuit. And two, you're just gonna need this room to get your arms and hands inside the engine bay. It's, it's pretty cramped. Um, there's really no way, no way to get to where you need to get to without, um, without getting some of this stuff out of here. I use these electric impact guns for disassembly. They make pretty short work, some of the smaller fasteners. Not super strong, um, and these are not super expensive ones, so, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. Next, what we're going to want to do is start taking apart the intake piping. Primary goal behind this is, again, to get some space in the engine bay. But the other reason is that we're going to take the AFM out. It's a pretty fragile piece of equipment. They're not as easy to find as they once used to be, so just better safe than sorry. Um, a couple bolts on the rear firewall that hold some of the uh, wiring harness on and hold the AFM supports on. We want to remove those. There's also this little spring clip um, coming up that actually holds the connector in. These are pretty pretty good to work with, um, but just as a heads up, you don't want to rocket them across your garage. They're real thin, so they're real hard to find uh, once they hit the ground. After we disconnect all of the intake piping from the manifold and the air cleaner box and all that, we'll be able to take the AFM right out. And from here, you know, we got a pretty good view of the inside the engine bay. We want to take stock with what we're going to do next. There's a thermostat housing we need to disconnect. There's going to be a reverse light switch. We need to get the shift cables off. Um, going to want to probably 
remove the bolts from the clutch slave cylinder um, on the back side of the transmission. There's just some heater hose brackets, a couple small things. There's a lot of stuff connected to other things. So now is the time to do it. Um, because once the car's in the air, as high as we need to get it, you're gonna need a step ladder to get over the um, get over the rear fenders to get in the engine bay, which is fine, you can do that. But anything you can do now to make your life easier moving forward, now is the time to do it. So rear jack point on these cars is the rear transmission mount. Uh, it's nice, it actually able, you're able to lift the car pretty high up in the air. So with that, let's, uh, let's get this thing up in the air and sitting on some jack stands. So here's that jack point. You can see where it's located, that rear transmission mount. It's about as high as my jack will go. Got the jack stands on the mounting points over there. Let's get to work underneath the car. You got the transmission fluid draining. Now there's certainly some flex coming out of it. You might be able to pick them up on camera, but maybe I'll try and get them afterwards when they're in the pan. Um, hopefully the damage is not too extensive, but we'll, uh, we'll just have to see. Right after draining the transmission fluid, we're gonna move over to the exhaust manifold. These are usually pretty, pretty stuck in there. Um, you're gonna to wanna to soak these in some, some penetrating oil for a while. Um, typically studs will come out with the nuts on these older cast iron manifolds, so just something to, something to take note of. After that, we're gonna take the, the rear exhaust box off. Um, just take your time with this. Um, you can do some of the bolts from behind the car, but in the end, you're gonna to need to slide this thing out from underneath. Um, just, just be wary. Just don't let this thing drop on your face. It's this one's pretty light, but some of them can be a little heavy. After you take the exhaust off, we're gonna move on to the axles. This is the passenger side axle. Still has the studs in it, so you just sort of zing them off there. Uh, this axle doesn't get in the way. Just sort of, just sort of loosen it, take it off, um, and just sort of push it out. Uh, push that away from the transmission. Uh, moving on to the driver's side axle. This one is going to get in the way, but it, you can weasel out the transmission without taking it out of the hub. After you remove both axles, you can go ahead and move to the transmission mounts from front and rear. You can take them out. The engine's not going to fall on your head or anything like that. It's still supported by the, uh, the motor mount on the passenger side and the transmission side. Uh, mount on the driver's side. There's a splash seal that um, is gone on most MR2s at this point, but this one still had it. I removed it to get to this mount. All right, guys. So here we are. We've got we've got everything ready to come out. So you can notice that this rear trans mount is disconnected from the car. So and so is the front one. It's the other blue one, way way up there. So right now this engine is loose, like loose, loose, waddles back and forth. Um, but what's going to happen next is we've got to support the oil pan on this side. Okay, this is the engine side. And then we've got to support the transmission on this side. And what's going to happen is that we're going to support those things. And then we're going to lower them together sideways. We're going to tilt them this way so we can yank the transmission out this way. Uh, it's a little bit of a trick. It's a little bit of a dance with some jacks. But uh, let's see if we, uh, if we can get to it. So after you get the transmission and engine supported, you're going to want to go ahead and remove the driver's side transmission mount. Uh, after that, you know, you want to get something in between the engine and the transmission and sort of prime, start prying them apart. They're going, to be, they're going to be stuck on there pretty good. Just make sure you're actually prying on the transmission engine itself and not uh, the flywheel. I forgot a bolt on the back side. Again, double check everything before you start this process because this really, this was really causing me some aggravation. With some, with some jostling around, some moving of the jacks, eventually uh, it'll come free. Now it does get stuck. My transmission jack did get stuck on the driver's side axle, but eventually we got it free. All right, everyone. So we got this thing out. Um, Looks in pretty good shape. I don't know what's up with the red and blue brackets. It's fine, America. Um, so 
I'm ashamed to admit I did put some duct tape over this before I moved the car, just in case I didn't want to get any dust or goo in the transmission. So uh, I'm going to pull it off and you guys can take a look at what we got going on. Oh yeah, look at that. Real nice. So you can see, you can see kind of what would have happened here. The axle um, is bolted onto the stub shaft. Why the bolts are missing, I'm not, why the studs are missing, I'm not really sure. Um, and essentially what happened is the, the bolts themselves backed out, the axle fell off, and then just fump, 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 because the car was still moving, uh, it just chewed a hole right into the case. So, uh, so yeah, here's where we're at, uh, and to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're gonna do next. So um, we're gonna take a lot of these brackets off, um, make it a little bit easier to work, um, to work on the, to work on the transmission itself. Um, but what we're gonna do, this is where it gets fun. We're gonna take these bolts out. There's this whole bunch of bolts that run around this, this section right here. This is where their differential is. Uh, and we're gonna split the case right between these two halves. Normally what you would do is you would take this cover off. This is where your fifth gear lives. You would uh, you'd take those gears off and then you would separate. You'd be able to slide this whole thing out, but you'd have to move get to remove a bunch of stuff and like i said we are trying to do it for cheap trying to do it for simple and uh let's do it all right so we get the transmission up on the bench here well makeshift bench you can see to really get a good idea about what some of the carnage so um there's definitely a bunch of metal shavings inside the case so we're gonna have to take it apart obviously and uh check it out it, it doesn't look bad like the rest of the transmission looks okay um but i think we're really just gonna have to see um uh, see what it looks like once we get inside so let's flip it over and uh let's get to it After removing the shift selector arm, I went ahead and pulled the, um, pulled the dust shield off the seal of the transmission. It's good to just move it now, you don't want to damage it or anything like that. After I removed that stuff, I went ahead to pull the three bolts out of the bell housing side of the transmission that hold the two parts of the case together. The 12 mils are pretty tight, um, take, some, take some care of breaking them free, but once they're free you can just uh, run them off with electric impact, save a little bit of time, they're real long bolts. Right, we got those three bolts out, so we're going to roll the case back onto the clutch side. You know, C52 is not too terribly heavy. It's a little bit cumbersome, just like any transmission, but just be careful when you're moving it. But one person, not a big guy, but one person can usually do it on their own. So, uh, so here's what we're going to do now. We got a bunch of bolts around the outside of the case. Uh, they kind of run in a ring all the way around. We're going to loosen all those. And then we're going to see about pulling the case apart. So, but first we're going to take this little plate off too and bump the uh, selector shaft out so we can actually move stuff around as we get in there. is a neutral or it ain't gonna work I have to put that back in for the moment get it shifted there we are I should just slide right out there she is All right, so all the bolts are loose. So now we're going to 
Just zing them off with a Ryobi, save a little bit of time. So we got all the bolts out. Um, I did read somewhere that uh, you pull the fill plug out and it helps you see what we're gonna do next. So it gets a little bit tricky. Um, let me get some tools and we'll come right back. I'm gonna split the case here. So what you really wanna look for is like a place that you're gonna be able to get a pry bar in. It is RTV'd on, so it's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So we're gonna try and do this and we're gonna try and not crack the transmission case. Well, that's how you take a piece of transmission off. So let's not do that again. Hmm? All right, okay. So now we got a little bit open, a little bit difficult to see, but now we just kind of work our way around the whole transmission, pop it open. That's the sound you want. You can hear it starting to crack open. It's the RTV loosening up, starts to get a little hollow. Just keep going. There are some dowels, so you want to be mindful of those. Okay, so it's pretty much loose. This is where it gets tricky. So what we're gonna do is we have to lift the transmission case up. While we're doing that, we have to unbolt the reverse idler arm, as I understand it. So what we're gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and prop this thing up in some fashion and then, uh, and then try and reach it. All right, guys. You can see this, but reverse idle arm's right there. So this is what's stopping the case from coming apart. So you're gonna need to just sort of wrench in there. I'm gonna use some flat gear wrenches, um, and hopefully we are gonna split this case right now. Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. One of the bolts here. Okay. The other one's over here. With a gear wrench. I can. Sweet. This one should go a lot faster. Ooh, a little sketchy. Put that back in there. Yep. That's my finger. So I guess it's a little unstable, which is completely reasonable. Like I said, not, not BGB approved. So. So that's how you get into a C52 the wrong way. You can see some of the transmission case bits them uh, sort of playing with here. 
That's what uh, that's what's been floating around in there. Here's what we're gonna do next time. We're gonna survey the damage. We're gonna use all the tools the wrong way. We're gonna make all the fabricators cringe, but we're also gonna put the car on the ground. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.